Hello everyone and welcome to the Lewis Cooper Experience Podcast Experience Episode 4. That's 4 now, that's crazy. Um, I hope everyone is well. Um, as I said, we're going through a hell of a time and hopefully the next 10 minutes or whatever will give you a little bit of a distraction while I talk about things that I like, which is a positive thing, isn't it? Isn't that great? So, a very, very slight change to the format this week. I've got my notes here. Um, instead of movie of the week, we're going to do TV show of the week. And I'm not a big TV guy, but every now and then I find a TV series that I really like and I really get into. Um, I always find there's so many um, TV dramas now that like it's hard to it's hard to keep track. It's hard to have enough time to watch all of them. Um, and if I'm going to sit down for an hour, which most you know most things are now, I'm going to um, um, I'm going to watch a film basically because that's more my thing. But the reason I've not had a film of the week this week is because two the films I watched the last two nights I've done videos about already, and the films I watched the previous few nights I wasn't really that into, and you know no reason I just didn't enjoy them. So I don't want to talk about them. That's just fine. That's a good thing, right? If you don't enjoy something, just crack on, ignore it. Um, but yeah, my TV show of the week is Rami, which is an American show by Rami Youssef, um, who's a young lad. Um, from New Jersey, I believe he is. Well, he is in the series at least, where he, it's a show similar to kind of Aziz Ansari's Master of None, or um, in some ways Donald Glover's Atlanta, or probably not so much in that case, but it's a similar sort of vibe. And they're about half an hour episodes, which is great. I can't really watch anything that's longer than that. Um, and I feel like they're quite autobiographical, like not maybe not to, to, to the T, but it's kind of Rami is about being a young Muslim growing up in America basically like uh, Rami's family is Egyptian Arabic um, uh, but they've him and his sister have grown up in New Jersey and it's it's a really really interesting show I really like it I'm watching it on Stars Play which is one of those extra channels on Amazon Prime because you're already paying for something and then they want you to pay for something else but there's a few good deals on Stars Play, Stars Play at the moment there's some good films in there as well so I think I'm paying like one ninety nine a month for it for six months which isn't too bad at all um, but yeah, as I say, I really like the show. It's 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 a culture I know nothing about. Like you know, I don't I don't know anything about kind of Muslim culture or Islam or anything like that. Um, but this is really really interesting to see, and it's it's quite um, it's quite interesting to see that a lot of the characters, well, majority of the characters are Muslims, and it's um sorry Muslim. They 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 make that clear in the show, and it's just interesting to see things from kind of the that perspective sort of thing and kind of see how the culture works because the whole show is about Rami trying to be a good person and be a good Muslim and he's kind of one of the few sort of really rational logical characters in the show like a lot of them are a little bit kind of out there kind of thing like not not over the top but you know that they're the ones that kind of a bit more problematic and Rami's kind of the, the straight man if you, if you will in the middle kind of thing not to say that he doesn't cause his own problems because he does but um like I say, he's trying to be a good Muslim, trying to be a good person, um, but he he doesn't drink or do any drugs. Um, but his attitude towards women is quite different. Like he's um, he's quite promiscuous in a lot of ways, and he gets himself in a few a few issues and that. And it's kind of that internal conflict of him trying to be true to his faith and trying to make his parents proud and that kind of thing. And like, there's a few episodes where Rami himself isn't in it at all, and it's about his sister and about how what her life is like, or about his parents and. It like there's a great one about his mum where she just needs to get out of the house more and meet more people and it's just kind of it's interesting just seeing people how people react to her and how she doesn't understand certain things in in sort of that culture um and it's it's, it's an interesting one um and his father has quite an interesting story because he's the one who came from egypt and um raised the family there so that he wanted to pursue his own dreams kind of thing um but i think it's a really good show it's it's, it's very adult like there are a lot of quite um uh, a lot of situations quite adult situations and that and there's some not kind of gross out humor but there's some that's kind of you know it's out there it's kind of um so if you're maybe a little bit sort of squeamish or you know maybe if you don't like things of a certain nature it might not be for you but i really like the kind of the dry humor and kind of like i say it's just interesting seeing something inside somebody else's culture that you don't really know about and i i really like it i think it's a really good really good show i'll say it's 10 episodes a season half an hour each thereabouts it's perfect it's uh and in the second series which i'm on now mahershala ali is in it possibly the finest actor in the world he is superb he hasn't really done any films for a while because i think he was just taking a bit of time 
off after his second Oscar. So, I mean, why not? Um, I mean, you might know him from Moonlight, Green Book, uh, True Detective Series 3, which he was superb in, uh, Luke Cage, Predators. Um, what's the, the film about the robot woman, Elita Battle Angel? That's what that is. Um, he's been in lots of stuff, and he is a fantastic actor. And he plays Rami's uh, Sheikh. I can't really pronounce that the way they pronounce it when he goes to a new mosque in the second series and he's kind of again he's a very stoic uh well-meaning character who's very to the point and rami kind of looks up to him as kind of the mentor that he sort of needs in his life and he is just spot on really really good but anyway moving on to comic of the week this is a mini series um that has recently come out i've just got the fourth issue um and it's a four-part mini series which is cool and it is transformers the terminator i've got this in the cover still which is a bit silly because it's reflecting the light but you get the idea so that's a pretty cool cover you've got transformer head there with the terminator inside and then you've got issue two on the other side again cool the transformer in the background with the terminator appearing in the ball of light there my favorite cover is in issue three with the, the Terminator on the bike from the first one with Sarah Connor and then Optimus Prime and Bumblebee behind them there. And then and then finally issue four just there with Megatron and Sarah Connor. Um I've just got a notification pop up saying I'm running out of storage, so hopefully it'll get to the end of this video. But yeah, I mean this series exists because they'll literally mash any two properties together. Transformers has recently had like a real um a real few a few series mini series in like my local comic shop where I get it from, um, Close Encounters Northampton. Um, they just put anything that's Transformers related into my um, into my drawer. So, um, I first got Transformers Ghostbusters. This is Transformers the Terminator. I'm getting Transformers eighty four, and there's also Transformers My Little Pony, which I was like, no, you're okay. Um, and coming up is well I actually think the first one's out now is Transformers Back to the Future so they'll, they'll literally mash anything together because people buy it and they can make toys of it so why not um but I'm quite I quite enjoyed that series to say it's just kind of a it is the best way of combining the two kind of franchises there's only one Terminator and he kind of gets sent back but it's kind of ties in with the Transformers being part of Skynet and that kind of thing um and he kind of is like the Schwarzenegger Terminator the T-800 from the original film and Sarah Connor is how she was in the original film and they kind of tie in together and it's quite well done really I mean it's quite um um like I say it's it's you, you, you kind of feel these things are a bit of a cash grab but like you, you, you know it's I've no problem with that I quite enjoy the series really nice art this is from the last issue so I'll just show you a little bit just so I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't read it but you see a really cool picture of Starscream there my my favorite transformer um and just like um just trying to find something that's yeah little little battle scene there so you can see all kinds of crazy stuff going on there um but yeah i enjoyed it it's a good series at one point the terminator gets all his flesh burnt off so he's kind of just the robot terminator um but they they play well off the uh the size difference between the two of them as well so it's uh because obviously transformers are huge and terminators are human size so but i thought it was a good series which brings me on to action figure of the week which is everyone's favourite, the Joker. Again, I won't put it too close because I know it goes a bit blurry when I do that. But this is the DC Multiverse McFarlane Toys Arkham Asylum Joker based off the computer game, which I absolutely loved. And I think this is a cool, cool version of the Joker. He's very long-limbed and very flexible, and you can put him in a number of different poses. On the um, listing online, it has him doing like a crazy like one-legged thing like that, but don't do that because it doesn't stand up. I've got him on the base there, which is pretty cool. He comes with this cool gun that he has in the game as well which is a bit tricky to get into his hands without breaking it but i managed it he does come with um the chattering teeth as well um but they're really hard to get in his hand that's the only downside i think that hand's quite open there to kind of get him to hold it but it doesn't really work very well i struggle with it so i just don't bother but the detail on the head is really cool i like his uh i like his hair i like the flower he's got there because it's kind of dead plus you know it squirts acid or what have you um, but yeah, it's a cool figure. He's long and spindly. His midsection is really squishy, which is odd. I don't really know why. It doesn't squeak or anything. So, but yeah, it's one of my favourite figures. I think it's super cool. I haven't got the Batman Arkham Asylum to go with it, but I like the other designs and the Batman more. But yeah, he's a he's a cool, cool figure. But yeah, that is my figure of the week: Arkham Asylum Joker. Look at that chin, massive. Which brings me to final section news i picked up a pen to give it more authority um 
the director of Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1984, Pat, Patty Jenkins, is working with Gal Gadot, or Gadot, not sure which, um, again for a Cleopatra film, which is interesting. I mean, I don't think there's been a Cleopatra film for a long, long time, but it's those that combination of those two. But again, I say it's not one that I'm going to go, oh, I can't wait to see that Cleopatra film, but that's interesting. They're an interesting combination. Uh, Patty Jenkins did... Um, the Charlie Theron film Monster, which is really, really good. I like that film a lot. So, you know, it's a pretty serious drama. And I like Gal Gadot. She's a great actress. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. The other news in more into the comic book world is uh, the Spider-Man 3, the MCU Spider-Man 3, not the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 3, um, has... Uh, the first they announced... Well, they didn't announce, but there's the rumours of Electro or Jamie Foxx being in it, which I don't even know if that's been confirmed yet, but, I mean, we'll see. Um, but also they announced that Doctor Strange is going to be in the film, which at this point in the MCU blessed world we live in, you kind of go, yeah, why wouldn't he be in it? But I don't know if that's going to be kind of in a new mentor role, because I don't really think he really needs a mentor now, Spider-Man. He's, you know, he's, he's done a lot in the short space of time. He's been the Spider-Man. Um, but it also lends credence to the multiverse theory that people are having after the one division show and kind of the next phase of the MCU being more mixture of different characters from different worlds, which, wouldn't surprise me dc are going that way multiverses are just the thing at the moment like in comics and everything and toys like that's a multiverse toy there um but also there's been rumors that andrew garfield and Tobey Maguire, the previous cinematic spider-men have signed on um to reprise their roles as spider-man in the same film i don't know whether that's true it's again it's all a rumor at this point um but it'll be interesting to see if they decide to do that and then they mix kind of all the spider-men i i mean i can i can live without it i'd like to um Tom Holland as Spider-Man and I'm happy to see another Spider-Man film with him and we almost didn't get it almost went back to Sony but there's you know there's the Venom rumors as well Venom appearing in it I just I don't want them to throw too much into it just you know give us a good give us a good story why not like it's, uh, but yeah but I mean as with anything this year who knows when we're going to see any of it so it's uh, it's just conjecture at this point I mean it's I know they're producing movies again, um, but I mean, we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to it. I don't think Marvel will ever go the route of releasing things straight to video on demand. I, I don't think that will happen unless things get really bad. But, you know, let's not worry about that right now. But yeah, that was episode four of the Lewis Cooper Experience podcast experience. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like. Please subscribe. Any ideas for future things you want me to talk about, just let me know. Um, any comments or any feedback, again, let me know. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.